Palm Sunday. Amen. If you would stand to your feet, let's give God praise in this house for another day. Isn't God awesome? He's holy. He's just. He's real. He's a provider. Give him your praise from the bottom of your heart. Let's give him your praise. Some people clapping. That's a form of praise too. But open your mouth and give God praise on this morning. Somebody tell God thank you. Tell God that you appreciate him. Tell God that you love him. There's nothing wrong with bragging and telling God thank you. Amen. This morning we have our scripture and our prayer coming from our youth department. Miss Bria Collins will bring our scripture this morning. And Thomas Smith will bring our prayer. Amen. Let's receive our youth. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brielle, and today I'll be reading Psalms 95, verses 1 to 3. Come, let us sing for, for joy to the Lord, and let us shout aloud to the rocks of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving, and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. that everybody bow their heads and close their eyes. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as the most humble of your servants, thanking you for allowing us to make it to this place today, Lord, to give praise to you. Thank you for the ones that are here today presently and also the ones that are viewing online. Lord, we know that... Sorry. We ask that you keep in mind our Build Back Better program, Lord. Build Back Better campaign, Lord and that you allow us to come back as a stronger church physically and as a spiritual church and as a stronger people, Lord. We ask that you keep in mind the members of this church, Lord, as they're dealing with whatever they're dealing with. We have our first lady who was in an accident, Lord, and we ask that you keep your hands over her. We also ask that you maintain and improve the health of Lady G, Lord, as we move on throughout our, our, our year and continuing throughout, Lord. We know that through you, all everything that is impossible becomes very possible, Lord. So we ask that you allow us to be a strong people with you in mind, with you in our hearts, with you in our souls. We know that through you, we can do anything and that your love is so strong. So please just continue to be an active member in our lives and bless each and every one of, each and every person in here abundantly, Lord. We know that we have an, a, a God that does exceedingly and abundantly above for his people. So we love you for that. We thank you for that. And we ask that you just continue that. In your name we pray. Amen. Mount Bethel, I need your help. Come on, you know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Woo! Come on, Mount Bethel. If you're watching online, do me a favor, tag and share. Come on, everybody, do it. Clap your hands. Come on. I got to see you clapping. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Simple song. Everybody know it. Say, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. Everybody lift your voice in the room. How great go. How great. 
know. Say, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you praise. To give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Will you praise him? Yeah. 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 Stay right there. Yeah. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, clap him. Let's do it. Oh, oh. Good job, whoever did it. Break the music for me. Clap your hands. Do me a favor. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. Now do me a favor. Look down your arm and say, neighbors. I'm going to find one good road. Look now your whole row and say, neighbors, whatever I do, I need you to do it. Oh, man, y'all still looking at me. You supposed to look at your neighbors. Come on. Look at your neighbors. Say, neighbors, whatever I do, I need you to do it. If your neighbor ain't clapping, something wrong with your row. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. I need one good rope. Come on. Let's go. Do it. Say, I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give the glory. Y'all ain't lift your hands. Lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give you praise. To give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord.
give God some praise. Come on and give him some praise. For he is worthy of the praise. Come on, everybody, clap. Come on. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's just see everybody. Everybody, clap, clap, clap. We came to bless them. Come on, everybody, say hallelujah.
an awesome God, don't we? He is indeed worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
At this time, we want to recognize anyone who is visiting us for the first or second time, either here in the sanctuary or online. If you're visiting for the first or second time, would you please stand so we can recognize you? God bless you, my sister. Glad you're here. God bless you, my sister. Glad you're here. Those of you who are visiting online, if you would just put in the chat, first time, second time stopping in, we want you to know on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Curtis Ballard Jr., Dr. Ballard, and the entire Mount Bethel family, you are welcome. As you see, we love to lift up the name of Jesus, and we want you to feel free to lift up your hands and share out hallelujah with us amen come on and welcome them one more time we're just so grateful that you're here at this time we do want to share a few announcements please continue to be in prayer and support for the following families we know they had recent deaths in the family and they continue to grieve those losses and we need to continue to surround them with love and support the wilson family gibbons family milton family welsh family the reed and anderson family brother being and the loss of his grandmother and then brother artist Gooding and the it Gooden in the loss of his uncle. So let us please make sure and keep all of them lifted up, keep them covered in prayer, surround them with love, reach out to them, love on them. They're gonna need love for the weeks and months to come. We do also have some sick and shut in announcements. We want to make sure that we continue to be in prayer um, and support um, for our first lady, Dr. Takenya Ballard and son Darrell, who were in a car accident this week and so she is recovering we ask that you continue to lift her up please continue to lift up Deacon Alvin Anderson he did have a successful surgical procedure so we thank God for that and he continues to heal so let's continue to lift him up we want to again congratulate the Reverend Curtis Ballard and First Lady Dr. Takenya Ballard as the newly installed pastor and First Lady of Mount Bethel Baptist Church. Come on and bless God with me. Hallelujah. We just were so grateful. We bless God for them and their leadership, and we're just excited about what God is going to do in this ministry. We want to let everyone know that there is no corporate Bible study here on Tuesday night. Um, however, we do want you to make sure that you join us um, for Mount Mentum, the Holy Week celebration. Um, that is going to be a combination of Mount Bethel Baptist Church. It's going to also include Mount Olive Baptist Church and Mount Herman, thus Mount Mentum. On Thursday night, this Thursday night, March 28th at 7 o'clock p.m., please meet us at Mount Herman AME for Monday Thursday service where the um, the host again um, on that night will be Mount Bethel so it's going to be at Mount Hermon but the host will be Mount Bethel so that tells us that we need to be in the place amen amen and then on this Friday night March 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. We want you to meet us at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church for the seven last words of Christ. Amen. Amen. And then we know that we will culminate with the Easter Resurrection Service on next Sunday, March 31st, right here at 8.30 a.m. Amen. Come on and put your hands together for a power-packed week that we have. Is Brother Jay Anderson in the house? Oh, we're going we're gonna to have him come um, at the end for that. Um, we do want to let you know that there will be Easter rehearsal this Tuesday night right here at 7 o'clock p.m. And that's going to be for the youth, for their speeches, any participants for the skit. Um, there's going to be the testimonies from the tomb. And then also the choir and dance ministries are asked to be here again. That's going to be on Tuesday night. I believe that's all that we have in the way of announcements. Come on and put your hands together because we know God has a word for us on this Palm Sunday. So immediately following the choir with the song of preparation, let's bless God again for our pastor as he comes with a word that we know will bless us.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, I got real quiet after announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we just lift our hands and open our mouths and tell God something good? some of us, it was hard to get here this morning. But you say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we pressed our way here just to lift our hands in this room and say, Lord, we thank you. <laughs> oh, God, we've been through too much not to worship him. Somebody say, I'm going through too much not to worship him. Oh, Shels, if that's your testimony, I'm going through too much. Thank you, God. Not to lift my hand and say, Lord, I thank you. That's why my worship is for real. And I lift my hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Because my worship, my worship is for real. Everybody in this room, because because my worship, come on, my worship, my worship is for real. Oh, one more time, because my worship, come on, because my worship, my worship, my worship is for real. Somebody getting that testimony one more time, Ben. Because my worship, because my worship. I've been through too much. Everybody in this room said, I've been. I've been through too much. Not, Not to worship him. I've been, I've been through too much. Not, Not to worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I lift my hands up to give you the hand. 
It is for real. My worship is for real. Let's just have that one more time. Because my worship, my worship, my worship is for real. My worship is for real. I dare you to look at your neighbor and just say, neighbor, my worship is for real. I don't know about yours, but my worship is for real. My worship is for real. Because my worship is for real. My worship, yeah, yeah. My worship is for real. Is for real. Everybody stand. Worship is sometimes a sacrifice. Every day you wake up, you don't always feel like it. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how spiritual you are. There are some days that you wake up when life has hit you in ways you didn't see coming can find it hard to worship and I want to free you because that doesn't mean anything is wrong with you doesn't mean that you're not saved does not mean that you are not sealed does not mean that you don't love the Lord it just means you're human sometimes you don't always feel like it but just because you don't feel like it doesn't mean he's not worthy of it that the only way you can feel is because you do have life. And the only reason you have life is because he woke you up this morning. Put breath in your body, started you on your way, clothed you in your right mind. That God is worthy of our best worship. So why don't you open your mouth this morning and it might be hard for your neighbor to worship, but why don't you do it for your neighbor? Why don't you press in for your neighbor this morning? Why don't you lend some strength to the hand you hold this morning? Why don't you open your mouth and thank God for your neighbor's life, for your neighbor's strength, that your neighbor made it to church this morning, that no devil in hell kept your neighbor from getting here this morning. And because you both are here, you are victorious, you're winners, you're overcomers. God still got a plan. God still gonna work it out. God still gonna move. It's still gonna get better. So we open our mouths this morning and say, thank you, God. We love you, God. We worship you, God. And God, because we're here, we believe you can change things. So I don't know what you walked in with this morning, but God can still move. He can still do it. He can still open it up and clear it and make it straight. As a matter of fact, I squeeze my neighbor's hand to let you know that God's getting ready to do it. That it's going to happen. That it's still possible. That God's still able.
Hallelujah. So God, move in this place. Speak a word in this place that changes things. Stand up in your preacher. Give me clarity of thought and voice. Help me to preach your gospel with your power. I'll give you your praise. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Lord, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. I will be lost in thine. It is in the matchless, majestic, marvelous name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hug somebody and tell them God's got something for you today. Hallelujah. It's amazing how things can move so quickly. We had such a great time last weekend. Did we have a great time last weekend? So we were still basking in what God did last weekend. This Wednesday morning, my wife was on our, her way to take our oldest to school. Was driving on Copens, and a school bus came over in her lane, struck the car, hit them, hit them right in front. Watch this, of a cemetery. But I give God glory that it might have happened in front of the cemetery. But today she ain't and he ain't in the cemetery. And it might take more than that for you. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you ought to look all down your row and say, live. Woo! I said it could have been another way, but he didn't see fit. My God, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. God praise. It might take more than that for you, but that's all it took for me. You can do what you want to do today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are glad and rejoicing in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul doth make her boast in the Lord. The humble doth hear thereof and are glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. But let us exalt God's name together. Good morning, Mount Bethel. Good morning. It's good to see you. Happy Holy Week. Amen. Amen. It's the week we commemorate what Jesus did. Y'all might be stiff in here today. To shake yourself loose one time. It's the week we commemorate what the Lord has done through his son, Jesus Christ. This is Palm Sunday. This is Holy Week. We are excited as we move closer to resurrection. I want to reinforce that we want to do our part and show up in a major way for Mount Mentum services. Thursday night at Mount, at Mount Hermon, uh, Pastor Davidson will be bringing the word. We want to support that. And on Friday evening, for the first time, I'll be preaching my first seven last words service. I'm word number seven. So it's six folk in front of me that I got to get past. And it'll sure be nice if y'all are there to give me a few amens. Even if, I, even if you don't bring one today, listen, if you, don't, if you didn't bring your amen today, if I ain't hitting on nothing on Friday, amen real loud anyway. Give me some <laughs> amen real loud anyway. Amen. 
give God praise for all of those who serve and all of those who make ministry possible. Anybody need a word from the Lord? Amen. Now, I, I was working on a Palm Sunday word uh, earlier this week, and then Wednesday happened. So I'm going a different way today. Right. Me and the devil got business. Psalm 124. Psalm 124. Reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. This is what it says. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. Streams would have gone over our soul. And the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I just want to preach from the subject this morning. Simply, he's on my side. That's it. Why don't you make it personal and help me preach? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just came to tell you he's on my side. My Lord. My God, you may have your seats in the Lord's presence. What a journey it's been for Israel. What a truly harrowing and encompassing journey it has been for Israel. 400 years is a long time to not have fellowship with God. 400 years of oppression and degradation, 400 years of pain, 400 years of despair, 400 years of hopelessness, 400 years of working in vineyards and working in fields and working in pyramids and working in conditions that do not serve you. For hundred years of making someone else life better when yours is full of hell. Four hundred years of toiling and struggling. Four hundred years of darkness. Generation after generation after generation were born in Egypt and lived in Egypt and suffered in Egypt and died in Egypt with no hope, no recourse, no nothing. 400 years of looking up at stars and seeing no light. 400 years of oppressive rule and reign of Pharaoh. And for 400 years, God is silent. 400 years, God does not speak. 400 years, cries to the Lord are not answered. It must be a point of contention. And it must be a point of wonderment for these children of Israel. For how can you be God's chosen people and God won't even talk to you? 
puts a lens, a unique perspective of what it truly means to be chosen. What it means to be elevated in the life and in the eyes of God. Does it really benefit us to be called God's chosen people? If God has chosen to leave us in these conditions. God, how can you love me? How can you love us? How can we be the people who were called out and you won't even grant us an audience? You give us no relief. My brothers and sisters, many of us have that weight. Many of us have experienced that. Many of us have been called, favored by God, chosen by God, loved by God, and then sometimes God goes dark on you. God goes silent. We are a long way for those fields in Abram's camp of Hebron when the Lord calls to him and says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. But now, these children of Israel are in darkness oppressed don't know how they're going to make it out or even if there is a way out but God is not through God is not finished 400 years though a long time in our eyes are but a vapor to God it is but a blink to God God still has a plan for his people. God is still going to show God's self strong. God's still going to come through in unimaginable ways. God is getting ready to give Israel the greatest introduction that anyone has ever seen. He goes and picks out Moses. He says, Moses, I have an assignment for you. You will go to Pharaoh. You will be the liberator for my people. You will go to Pharaoh and you will say, let my people go. I'm going to use you in ways you never thought I could. Moses says, that sounds well and good, but I'm who I am. But who are you? Who am I to tell them who sent me? And the Lord said, just tell them I am that I am I ought not pause right there but I'm glad that God is still I am he's still the great I am he's still everything I need him to be that even now in this stage in this climate of life I have found God to be everything I need God to be he's been bread when I'm hungry He's been water when I'm thirsty. He's been a healer when I'm sick. He's been a way out of no way. He's been a way make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. Is there anybody here who can testify? He's still the great I am. Moses goes forth and he's getting ready to make a profound and grand and great introduction on behalf of God and y'all God is getting ready to show out he's getting he's getting ready to show out y'all he's about to put it on he starts sending all kind of plagues flies and frogs and darkness and leprosy he, he sends y'all he puts on the ritz God shows himself strong. He kills every firstborn Egyptian whose blood is not over the doorpost. God shows himself mighty and strong. You know what? I'm glad that when God gets ready to throw his weight around, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the hearts of men what good things God's got in store. I love God. I'm glad he's a friend. I'm glad he's a comforter. I'm glad he walks with me and talks with me. But Lorenzo, I love it that every now and then he shows me just how God he is. 
Sometimes he'll do something that blows my mind. Something I didn't see coming. Something that lets you know nobody can do it but the Lord. Has he ever come through for you in a mighty way? And now for the grand finale. Now for the grand finale. As if it couldn't get any better, Pat. As if it, it, it couldn't get any better. They walk out of Egypt. And they come to the Red Sea. The Red Sea is in front of them. Got to see it. Pharaoh and his army behind. They can't go back. And it seems like they can't go forward. And Moses stretches out his rod. And the sea parts right in front of them. And the children of Israel goes forward and goes through on dry land. And Pharaoh said if it was good enough for them, maybe it's good enough for us. But he was wrong that day. And the sea closes in on them and kills everybody who's against. You should have seen it. It was something to see. It is an introduction that is not only worth celebrating. Watch this. It is an introduction worth chronicling. You need it for historic record. It's not good enough just for it to happen and you just to celebrate it, but others should celebrate it for generations to come. That when the Lord does something for you, when the Lord moves in your life in a profound and mighty way, you ought not keep it to yourself. You ought not hold on to it. You ought not hide it, but every once in a while, you ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done. The people of God ought not have to be pushed to share their testimony. But when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you, you ought to run to tell somebody what the Lord has done. I wish you could see what he did for me. I wish you could see how he opened the door and cleared the path and made the way. You ought to be spilling out to tell him. Like my mama said, you ought to have diarrhea in the mouth thinking about it and how good God has been to you. When the Lord has done something for you, you ought to tell somebody just how good God has been. You ought not keep quiet and sit there and look when you think about how the Lord brought you over and brought you out and brought you through you ought to always be ready to tell your story look at your neighbor and say neighbor I got to tell it matter of fact you can't tell it like I can tell it what the Lord has done for me is there anybody here who can give God praise for your testimony. So they have this grand experience and they have to tell the story. This is a psalm, y'all, but this ain't a psalm of David. <laughs> this is in the psalm book of Israel. But Reverend Warner, this ain't a psalm of David. This is a psalm that is recorded. This psalm is before David. David has some great psalms in this collection. This ain't a psalm of David Bishop. Because the Israelites don't need David to tell their story about this one. They can tell their story all by themselves. They put pen to parchment. They come together. They think about their experience with meeting the Lord and the only thing they can come up with I feel good this morning is that if it had not been the Lord who was on my side it's important Vicky. it's important because for 400 years we didn't know if he was on our side. 400 years, it has not looked like the Lord was on our side. 
For 400 years, it has not looked like God even cared about us. But it only takes one introduction with the Lord to let us know that he is, in fact, on our side. See, 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 Israel wants you to know that if you look at the first half of our story, it looks as if he ain't on our side. But you got to keep reading. That, that, that there's more to our story. We didn't end where we started. That something shifted. Something changed. And we got to make sure you ain't getting the story wrong. Ain't nothing worse than somebody telling your business and they only got half the information. Nothing worse than you hearing your story from somebody else and you like, dog, that's news to me. <laughs> you telling me something about me I ain't even know. <laughs> it should say, we're not going to leave this in nobody else's hands. And I know it hadn't looked like it. But, but God is on our side. I came to tell somebody going through this morning, I know it don't feel like it right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord is on your side. I know it's been a rough season. I know you've been going through and it's been one thing after the next thing, after the next thing, after the next thing. But I came to tell you the Lord is on your side. He's on your side the way you know he's on your side it's because in spite of everything you've been through you're still here your life is the testimony that the Lord is on your side that your next breath is the te I wish I had somebody today your next breath is the testimony that God is on your side This whole psalm turns on one conjunction. This whole discourse turns on one two-letter conjunction. If. If the Lord is not on your side or on Israel's side, the rest of this discourse does not exist. If the Lord is not on Israel's side, the rest of this psalm is not even relevant. But the fact that the Lord is on their side gives them more to talk about. It, 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 is, the, it, it is the thing that moves the psalm along. And to this morning they're celebrating the fact that the Lord is on their side. So, so, so what are they celebrating? I'm almost done. What, what are they celebrating this morning? They're celebrating first that he canceled the plan of the enemy. Ooh, tough crowd. He canceled the plan of the enemy. That's point number one. He, he, he canceled the plan of the enemy. What did he do first? First, he stopped their production. He, he stopped their production. It's right there in the text. It's, it's right there. in the Y'all read the Bible? It's right there in the text. It says, if it had not been... For the Lord who was on our side. Let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, watch this, they would have swallowed us alive. Y'all missed it. It went right past you. It ain't a deep sermon this morning. They would have swallowed us alive. See, I can celebrate this morning because I too have had my would have moments. That every child of God got a would have moment. That, that God is still the God who still stops and stays the hand of the enemy. He's not just the God who brings you out. Sometimes he's the God that never lets you get into it in the first place. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes he is the God who prevents things from happening. Uh, back where I'm from, they call that mercy. They call that mercy. You do what know what mercy is. Mercy is a little different from grace. Grace is what God gives you the endurance and the strength to bear. Grace is what God gives you the favor to come out of. But mercy is what the Lord holds back. Mercy is what he doesn't let you get involved in in the first place. Mercy is what he sees coming before you see it coming. And before you get to it, he stands in front of it and he blocks you from it. See, you can't shout this morning because you don't know what he held back. Yeah, yeah, you can't get happy because you don't even know what he held back. But if you had even the inkling, the indication, if you had some lens as to what God kept from you, the trouble you were supposed to see, the pain you were supposed to see, the accident you were supposed to get in, the operation you were supposed to have, the trouble you were supposed to get into, if you only know what he kept back for you, you will tear this church up because of his mercy. And sometimes my praise to God ain't for what he did for me that I saw. Sometimes I praise God for the stuff he kept from me that I don't even know about. Is there anybody here who can give God praise because of his mercy? Mercy! He held it back. He kept the enemy at bay. He canceled the assignment. And I'm here today not because what I survived, but I'm here today for what the Lord didn't even let me see. Give God praise for his mercy. He stopped. He stopped, watch this, he stopped the production, but Kim, he stopped the progression. He stopped, he didn't just stop the production. He stopped the progression, watch this. When men rose up against us, watch this, then they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. Then the streams would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. See, all of those are progressions. That if this happened, then this would have happened. And this happened, this would have happened. And if this happened, this would have happened. But God said this morning, not only am I stopping the production, I'm cutting it off at the head. I'm stopping the progression. What does that mean? It means I'm breaking the cycle. I'm breaking the cycle. I'm breaking the rhythm of pain and despair in your life. I came with a word from somebody to let you know God's getting ready to break the cycle. I know it ran in your family, but it's going to stop with you. I know your mama dealt with it and your grandma dealt with it and your great grandma dealt with it, but baby, it's getting ready to stop with you. God's getting ready to break the cycle. He's going to stop the progression. If it ran in your family, guess what? It's getting ready to run out. God's getting ready. I said God's getting ready. God's getting ready to break the cycle. Matter of fact, in the name of Jesus, the cycle is broken. You ought to look all down your road and say, it ends with me. It ends with me. It ends with me. It ends with me. It ain't gonna hit me. It ain't gonna hit my children. It ain't gonna hit my grandchildren. Matter of fact, it stops right now. The blood of Jesus breaks every cycle. And if you know he's a cycle breaker, give God your best breaks. I said he's breaking the cycle. He's breaking the cycle of pain. He's breaking the cycle of loss. He's breaking the cycle of mental illness. He's breaking the cycle of diabetes. He's breaking the cycle of sickness. He's breaking the cycle of death. He's breaking the cycle. 
And if you need some cycles broken in your life, why don't you take 10 seconds and give the cycle breaker your best break? He's breaking it right now. He's breaking the cycle. He's breaking it off you. He's breaking it off your children. He's breaking it off everybody around you. He is the God who still breaks cycles. You've been struggling with it too long. It's been in your family too long. You've been crying about it too long. You've been praying about it too long. You've been suffering with it too long. You've been worried about it too long. But in the name of Jesus, it's getting ready to break. He's breaking cycles. He's not just going to stop the production. He's going to stop the progression. That's how the enemy wears us down. He keeps it progressing and progressing and progressing. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, that cycle is getting ready to break. Can shout because cancels the assignment of the enemy. But then watch, he created a path of escape. <laughs> he created a path, Lord, I'm trying, of escape. Watch, I'm right there in the text. Go to verse 6. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Watch this. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare is broken. Shout broken. And we have escaped. Here, 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 Deborah, here's what he does. Here's what he does. First of all, he gave me sight to see that he did his part. He, he gave, watch this, you gotta, I got to come get you. He gave me sight, cook. He gave me sight to see that he did his part. Text says the snare is broken. God did his part. He broke the snare. I prayed about it. I cried about it. I asked him to do it. I asked him to do it. I asked him to do it. And he broke the snare. And he let me see that he did it. He gave me the strength to see that he broke the snare. He gave me sight to see that he did his part. That's part one. But then he gave me the strength to do my part. He gave me the sight to see that he did his part. Then he gives me the strength to do my part. Watch this. It's, it, it's, it's a compound thing. It's a partnership. Watch. He says the snare has been broken. Come. We have escaped. Missed it. Snare has been broken. That's God part. We have escaped. That's our part. I'm going to shoot it by you one more time. Snare has been broken. Shalom Hodge, that's our part. We, that's his part. We have escaped. That's our part. You, you, you know what? You know what the problem is with a lot of us. Help me, Holy Ghost. The problem is with a lot of us that he's broken the snare, but we still standing in the trap. <laughs> 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 
the sheriff, he's done his part. He's broken the snare. But the problem is, we standing around like we still in the snare. Here's my question. Why are you still standing in stuff God has freed you from? Why are you still stuck in places that God has loosed you? Why are you still standing in a broken trap? See, beloved, God is never going to break the snare and then carry you out of it when you can walk out of it yourself. Mike, that ain't how God works. That's not how God works. God is not going to break the snare and carry you out of it when you got two good legs. Stop waiting on the Lord to loose you from stuff he's already freed you from. That sometimes it becomes your responsibility to recognize that the Lord has broken the trap. And then you've got to have enough courage to step out of what the Lord broke. God has showed you everything you need to see about the situation. You prayed for a sign and God didn't bust your head open with a stop sign, a yield sign, a street sign. He even sent a hoodlum round and, and showed you a gang sign. You didn't see all the signs you need to see. Now it's time for you to walk out. What are you waiting on? You waiting on God to do something he done already did. You waiting on God and God's waiting on you. You better look around you and see God has done what God has done. And you better walk out. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. What are you waiting on? What is your barrier? What is keeping you from walking out of what God has freed you from? Beloved, God ain't going to carry you out what you can walk out of. I came to tell somebody in the name of Jesus, it's time for you to start taking some steps. I know it's hard, but you better take them steps. I know you don't know how, I don't know how, I know you've been bound so long, you don't even know what it feels like to be free, but you better start taking some steps. And, and, oh, I don't want to say this. Some of us are addicted to being the victim. Some of us are so addicted to sympathy and so addicted to people feeling sorry for you and so addicted to attention that it almost does not serve your addiction for you to be free. Some of us are trauma addicted. That we, 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 we've been, things have happened to us so much and we have the opportunity to be free. We don't even know what it feels like to take possession of that because we are so bound by trauma. But I came to tell you, you better take possession of your own life. You better take ownership of your own life. Ain't nobody going to live this life for you. Ain't nobody going to keep trying to help you up and pick you up when you able-bodied and you can walk. You better take some steps. You better take ownership of who you are. You better walk in your authority. You better step into what God has for you. And you better leave that old victimized and bound and slave mentality and always going alone to get along and me owe my mentality back. And you better embrace your liberty in Christ Jesus. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. You ought to take your power back. 
You ought to take your peace back. You ought to take your joy back. You ought to take your strength back. You ought to walk into everything God has for you. Is there anybody here who says the snare is broken and I'm coming out? Matter of fact, you ought to look on your row and say, neighbor, I'm coming out of this thing. That was the wrong neighbor. You didn't say that with no power. Put your preaching voice on. Say, neighbor, I'm coming out of this. Matter of fact, you ought to watch me. Watch me. Watch me walk. Watch me work. Watch me move. Watch me grow. Watch my increase. Watch my overflow. Watch my best days. You ought to watch me come out of this. Is there anybody here who can declare I'm coming out? I'm done. I'm done. He cancels the assignment of the enemy. Mm. He creates a path for us. But thirdly and finally, he cultivates a partnership that will endure. That's verse 8. Verse 8 says, my help, our help is in the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. He says, our help is in the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. First of all, he's proactive. Check says, I help. You missed what I just said. I said he's proactive. He doesn't wait on it. He's always my help. He doesn't wait on it, but he steps right in. And he's my help. He's proactive. And is there anybody here who can celebrate that the Lord will be your help? Is there anybody here who can testify that Jesus has been your help? When I had things going in my life and I didn't know how I was going to make it and I didn't know how I was going to get through, I went to friends and they couldn't help me. I went to family members and they couldn't help me. I went to co-workers and they couldn't help me. But I called on the name of Jesus and he was my help. Is there anybody here who can testify he's been my help? I've been sick in my body, but he was my help. I had trouble on my job, but he's been my help. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but he's been my help. He says, I help. He's proactive, but he ain't just proactive, but he's powerful. He says, I help. It's in the name of the Lord. I wish you knew what that meant. I help. It's in the name of the Lord. And is there anybody here who knows that the Lord has power? Is there anybody here who knows that he ain't just a weak God? He ain't a powerless God. But my God has all. I said all. I said all power. I said he's got all power. Power to lift you up. Power to turn you around. Power to make your way straight. Power to heal your body. Power to pay your bills. Is there anybody here who know the Lord got power? But if he's ever been powerful in your life, give God praise. Last one. He's proactive. He's powerful. But lastly, he's proven. It says, I help. It's in the name of the Lord. Then it says, the maker of heaven and earth. You miss what I say. It says, my help is in the name of the Lord, who's the maker of heaven and earth. He ain't just proactive. He ain't just powerful. But he's proven that all you got to do is look at the sun shining. All you got to do is look at the birds chirping. All you got to do is look at the fish swimming. All you got to do is look around at creation. He made heaven and earth. And if he made heaven and earth, he's still the same God who can change your situation. If he made heaven and earth, he's still the God 
who can open up doors. If he made heaven and earth, he's still the God that can make it away. And all I came to tell you is that if he did it before, he's the same God who can do it again. Good afternoon, Mount Bethel. May the Lord, God bless you real good. But is there anybody here who can help me close this sermon and testify if he's done it before, he can do it again. He's the same God now that he was back then. He's the same God that hung the stars in the sky. He's the same God who made the waters. He's the same God who made the trees. He's the same God who made everything. And if that God did it for them, he can do it for you. So is there anybody here who can celebrate a God of repeat performances and give God praise and say, do it again? I don't know what you need for the Lord. I don't know what you need him to work out. I don't know what you need him to fix. I don't know what you need from him. But I got out of my bed on a Sunday morning to let you know that he's going to do it again. So if you need something from the Lord, if you really need something from the Lord, if you need something from the Lord, you ought to lift your hands, open up your mouth, and say, Lord, do it again. Heal me again. Bless me again. Touch me again. Cover me again. Open up another door. Clear another path. Make another way. Is there anybody here who knows the Lord will do it again? Well, why don't you do me a favor? Help me preach to a neighbor. Take a neighbor by the hand. Look that neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, the Lord is on your side. That was the wrong neighbor. Find you another neighbor. Take that neighbor by the hand. Look that neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, he's on my side. That was still the wrong neighbor. Find you just one more neighbor. Take that neighbor by the hand. This time, shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. And say, neighbor, he's on your side. And if you believe it, give God your best praise. I said, give him 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 your best praise. praise." Open up your mouth, lift your hands, and give God your best praise. He's on my side. He's on my side. And since he's on my side, I'm going to make it. If he's on my side, I'm coming out. Since he's on my side, I'm going to lift my hands. Because can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Say yeah. 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 Say yeah. He's on my side. And if he's on your side, let everything. He's on your side. Leap like he's on your side. Walk the floor like he's on your side. Dance like he's on your side. Is there anybody here who can give God praise? Cause he's on your side. I'm trying to let it go. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus at all, at all, He's done for me. I can give God praise. Cause he's on my side. 
so let everybody who the Lord's side is on give God your best praise. If you've been visiting the Mount for a while now and you don't have a local church home, we want to invite you to make Mount Bethel your home. Why don't you come forward at this time? The Lord has been touching your heart and pushing you towards this ministry. Come forward. Why wait another Sunday? Why wait another day? Hallelujah. Put your hands together for a powerful word. My, my, my. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? But thanks be to God, he is on our side. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. This is a great time, a great time to give back to the kingdom. If you have not given your tithes, your offering, your sacrificial gifts, we want you to go ahead and prepare those gifts at this time. We know that there are many, many ways that you can give. You can continue to text to give. You can go online. The information is on the screen for you. But if you need to prepare your cash, your check, go ahead and prepare that at this time. If you need an envelope, you should have gotten one on the way in. But if you need one and realize it now, go ahead and just slip your hand up in the air. And an usher will be glad to bring that forward. While you are preparing your gifts, we're going to ask that Brother Jay, Wood, uh, Jay Anderson come forward. Let's give him a hand as he comes forward with a special announcement. Amen, amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Thank God for a powerful word this morning from our pastor. And as we prepare to give, let's remember what today is. This is our kickoff for our Build Back Better campaign. 
Hopefully everybody remembered, right? We talked about this on the first Sunday of the month. So this is an exciting time, right? Because as many of you have seen, we've taken the steps to to start the clean out. We've actually not start. We've almost completely finished the, the initial clean out and, and, and demolition of all the damage that was done in the fire. But now it's time to take those steps to start building back better. Amen. Amen. So we are starting our campaign today. The ushers will have these pledge cards. We're asking that you fill out the pledge card. And remember what we've been asked. So the suggested gift was $25 per week. It's a total commitment of $2,000, and we didn't want to ask you for $2,000 right away, but if you can give it, give it. Uh, but for everyone else, uh, we're asking that $25 be just given as a sacrifice for this campaign. Let's do our part. God is doing his part. The insurance company, we're going to hold them accountable to doing their part. But let's do our part. Amen? Amen. Let's build back better. So what you can do, fill this out. It does tear. Uh, fill out the amount that you're going to give. And you're going to pledge to give over this time. Again, it starts today. It's 18 months. we got to be in it for a long haul. But God is, we're going to watch God do some amazing things as, as we just commit. So please get the, the, the pledge card. You can fill it out, tear it at the bottom, and just give it back to the usher as you give your offering today. Amen? All right. And we'll be running this. Uh, we'll, you'll see more and more announcements on this as the weeks come. God bless you. Amen. Can we celebrate Brother Jay Anderson and the amazing team that works <clears throat> as part of this Build Back Better campaign? Listen, y'all, it is our church. I'm going to say that again. This is our church. I'm going to say it one more time. This is our church. And Mount Bethel always leads from the front and never from behind. So we're going to do our part to build back better. Amen. Were you blessed by the word today? Can we celebrate Bishop Jimmy Williams who stepped out with us today? Can we give God praise for the man? Okay, let me say that again. The pastor of the Lighthouse Worship Center, the church you're sitting in right now, we're going to give God praise and honor for this great man of God. Thank him for being more than a friend. Amen. We're going home. Listen, please come out Thursday. Please come out Friday. Um, we won't have Bible study this Tuesday. We're going to defer to Mount Benham services. But these are going to be incredible services. And we want to step out. We want to do our part. And listen, uh, if, you, if you're used to being a once-a-week churchgoer, you're used to being a once-a-week churchgoer, Holy Week is a wonderful time to avail yourself and sacrifice some time for the Lord. Amen. Come out, sacrifice, be a part of these wonderful services. I promise you it will be a blessing. Our music ministry is going to share with others. It's going to be a high time of fellowship. I love Mount Milton because we fellowship and we love each other. And that's what the church is all about, coming together and fellowshipping and being a part in the kingdom force. Amen. Let's go home, everyone stand Look at somebody and say, neighbor, the Lord is on your side. And he's going to show you just how much this week. Thank you to all our visitors who visited with us. Good seeing you, my sister. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Look so beautiful in that ensemble. I love it. Let's go home. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. The Lord make his face to shine brightly upon you. The Lord God be gracious unto you. And may the Lord God, who's on our side, give you peace. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Hug somebody and tell them I love you.